This is the 3D Viewmaster Adventure Land of the Lost, an NBC television series. Viewmaster Reel 1. Picture 1. Rick Marshall, his 17 year old son Will, and his 12 year old daughter Holly plunged through a hole in space into an alternate universe. A mysterious place where dinosaurs still stalked each other and battled fiercely for survival. Shortly after their arrival in the land of the lost, Rick, Will and Holly were chased by a huge Tyrannosaurus, probably the most vicious of the dinosaurs, and forced to hole up in a cliffside cave. Picture 2 the cave soon became their home. It was relatively safe from attack and kept them dry during rainstorms. One day when their father was out searching for a key to the doorway that led back to earth, the dinosaur returned forcing Will and Holly to the rear of the cave. The Tyrannosaurus, the kids called him Grumpy, was soon distracted by another dinosaur. Will and Holly managed to slip out of the cave while he wasn't looking. Picture 3. Running through the Dawn Age jungle, as fast as they could, the children stumbled on a strange sight. It was a tall, mirrored object, a futuristic pylon made of glass-like material which was strangely out of time and place in these primitive surroundings. What is it? Holly asked. Will thought, shrugged his shoulders and answered in a barely audible whisper. Beats me! If dinosaurs could talk, they might have said the same thing, because Grumpy, the Tyrannosaurus and the Brontosaurus, largest of the dinosaurs, and the horned Stegosaurus were mystified too. Picture 4. The dinosaurs quickly lost interest in the pylon, however, and wandered off into the jungle. Holly and Will were by nature more curious. They were almost certain that their father was inside the pylon. Where else would he hide? Holly wondered. And they were right. Finding a secret entrance in the polished, mirror-smooth surface, Will and Holly cautiously entered the pylon. They found Rick in one of its inner chambers. I think I'm on to something, he told them. One of the buttons on this matrix may open the doorway to our universe. Picture 5 A doorway did open, as Marshall had predicted, but it led to a stairway that took them deeper inside the network of underground rooms and tunnels beneath the pylon. Fifty feet below the surface, Rick, Will and Holly felt a cold draft. Look, Dad, Will shouted, pointing at a triangular-shaped object. It's one of those things that opened the pylon. Picture 6 When their eyes had grown accustomed to the darkness, they saw a hole in the rocky walls that surrounded them. Come on, son, Rick said. Let's see if we can find out where it goes. Picture 7 Though she had discovered the hole, Holly was left behind as her father and brother explored its depths. Neither wanted anything to happen to her. Stop treating me like a baby, she protested. But it was too late. Suddenly... In one of those strange doorways, which seemed in the land of the lost to be there one minute and gone, the next a beautiful woman appeared. Viewmaster Reel 2 Picture 1 Who are you and what are you doing here? Holly asked the woman. My name is Reni, she said. I'd like to talk with you for a minute about your father and brother. They obviously think of you as the baby of the family. 
It's hard for them to stop protecting you. Holly was startled, not only by Rani's sudden appearance, but also by her knowledge of the Marshall family. It was almost as if they'd met somewhere before. Rainy then handed Holly three pendants, saying, take these. You will be able to communicate long distance with them. It was then that she first noticed the scare on Rainy's arm. Picture two. Rainy left much as she came suddenly. When Rick and Will returned, Holly showed them the pendants Rainy had given her. Picture three. They're sort of like walkie-talkies, Holly explained. The lady who gave them to me said that we can call for help if we'll wear them, regardless of where we are. Rick and Will didn't believe her story, but they put the walkie-talkies around their necks anyway, figuring they'd humor her. Then they got down to what was, to them at least, more serious business. That hole is too narrow for us, Holly, Rick said. Will and I have decided, therefore, that you'll have to explore it for us. I'm sorry, honey, there's no other way. That said, they lowered Holly down inside the chimney-like interior. Halfway to the bottom, Holly heard what sounded like a fight going on above. The slee stacks, the lizard-like creatures living in the caverns, were attacking her father and brother. Picture 4. Holly yelled for help, but quickly realized she'd have to help herself. She inched her way, hand over hand, to the top of the hole and found, when she got there, that the lizard-like men had carried her brother and father away. But where had they gone? In desperation, Holly put the communicator to her mouth and called. Long distance for Rainy, picture five. As she had earlier, the blue gowned woman materialized out of thin air. I'm right here, Holly, she said. Oh, Rainy, Holly said tearfully. The slee stacks have captured my father and my brother. Won't you please help them? Only you can help them, said Rainy. But I'm only a kid, Holly replied. Not so, Rainy told her. All you need is courage. When first we met, it seemed you wanted to be grown up. Now you have a chance to prove that you are. Picture 6 Meanwhile, in another region of the lost city, Rick and Will had been tied up near a steaming pit. They didn't know that they'd soon be dumped into the pit as sacrifices to the slee stacks god. Picture 7 In the darkness above, Holly slowly made her way toward them. Courage! I've got to have courage! She kept saying to herself over and over. I do want to be grown up. One of these days, but I think this may be rushing it a bit. Then, calling upon all the courage she could muster, she casually dropped a few light crystals into the Sleestex cave, causing a loud and blinding explosion. You master reel three. Picture one. Reaching the rim of the sacrificial pit, Holly found that the Sleestacks had been knocked unconscious by the huge blast. Rick and Will, on the other hand, had been blown into the pit. Peering into the mists with tears in her eyes, she cried out, Will! Dad! And receiving no answer, she decided to go after them. Picture two. When she got to the bottom of the pit, Holly discovered that Will was also unconscious. She told her father they'd have to get out of there fast. The sleestacks were bound to awaken soon. 
We can rig a sling and pull Will up, she said. But he's too heavy for me to pull him. You'll have to climb up first, Dad. Picture three. Working together for the first time as equal members of a team, Rick and his daughter managed to lift Will to the top. While she was waiting her turn, Holly noticed she'd cut her arm. Not a bad cut, she said, but there is something strange about it. Then she realized it was exactly the same as the cut on Rainy's forearm. Simply put, Holly and the blue-groaned young woman known as Rainy were really the same person. Holly was just a kid. Rainy was fully grown. But they'd met here in some sort of mix-up in history and time. Picture 4. As Rick pulled Holly up, the Sleestacks began to regain their senses. Quick! Rick shouted, spotting a dimensional doorway that had just opened. We can duck through here and, with luck, we may even get out of this mess alive. Picture 5. The danger cleared Will's head rapidly. Surprisingly, a friendly lizard man named Slatch led the marshals through the maze of tunnels to safety. They thanked him for his kindness and said goodbye, near the square tree in the jungle. You see, Rick said, there's good in everyone and everything. All you have to do is look for it. Come on, let's get back to our cave. I could use some lunch. Picture 6. To further demonstrate the truth of Rick's statement, Will's pet, Pterodactyl, flying reptile, was guarding the cave's entrance when they got there. And Dopey, a tame dinosaur, had brought them a whole cart full of giant strawberries. Sometimes you even find good when you aren't looking for it, Will laughed. Picture 7. Will and Holly, seeing that Dopey's card was stuck in a deep rut, rushed to his aid. Chaka, one of the chimpanzee-like Pacu people, helped them push it out, while she admitted that life in the land of the lost was not just a bowl of berries. Holly confessed that, after that scene beneath the pylon, this isn't half bad. In fact, she added wistfully, it kind of reminds me of home. We want to add new videos every day, so please subscribe to our channel. And if you had fun, thumbs up.